Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> this is on um, the Project Snowball here. This is a little short video I just wanted to do. Um, I got a question from somebody about how we wired up the shutoffs. And we have learned over the years a couple of little tricks. Um, so here's the shutoff solenoid just to orient us. Um, here's a good static picture. I'll try to hold that as steady as I can of the clip. So with the tab facing us, we've got ground, we've got pull, and we've got run. So ground, pull, run. Um, that's the way it's wired. On the solenoid side here, you've got black, white, red, black ground, white heavy duty pull, and red is the hold so let's come over here real quick um so one we've got green we just run it over here um to ground uh we actually ran it a little bit farther because we've already got quite a few grounds that we had to add for stuff we've got it going back here find the battery box to a nice ground over there okay so pull wire this is the one it's only on for a little bit and that is precisely because it's using a ton of juice. This is a grid heater relay. Now, grid heater relays, these are some of the things that we've learned. Grid heater relays are not continuous duty. So we've gone through three or four grid heater relays trying to find other relays that would do it. I will try to put an example of a grid heater if you're not starting off with a truck where you've got those, um, if you need new ones. Uh, you can also get them at Lowe's, but I'll put some that we've we've tried online. Um, so we're going to focus on this for just a second. So what we have is we've come off the battery here. Um, we've got a heavy-duty wire going to feed the back side of this. That's just how we routed it. Doesn't matter. And then we've got we've got, essentially on this other side we have just a nice I don't know it's probably a twelve a ten or a twelve gauge wire or something like that. Um, you could probably look on it and see if we had enough time. But we, we obviously wanted it to be even a little heavier than this stuff over here because we just wanted to give it overkill. Solder, soldered all the connections and, um, and insulated them. So that's the one side of it. So you just have battery to the back side. And then when your solenoid completes the circuit, it will then flow from the battery through here because it's sucking a lot of juice. Um, so over here, we have a trigger wire that's coming off the starter. Now, the important thing is, is you don't want, this is where we get in trouble. This is not wired correctly right here. We just haven't come back in and fixed it. This is a one-way diode to try to save, they call it a fuel shutoff solenoid saver. It's from, I think Larry B is where we got this one. Um, but you can use any one-way diode diode large diode like that anyway because this is not carrying a ton of juice but the problem is is if your starter gets stuck on which these do that does happen every once in a while the point is to keep it from back feeding up the system and then into this well we wired this a completely different way um, that when we wired it later on so the update is is you you actually there as you See if we can get a shot. See this yellow wire right here? That goes down to your starter. And so what we did is we put the diode instead of there. In a little while, this will get cut and it will be put in line here. And then we tap off um, from behind it to trigger this starter energizer. Okay, there are other ways you can do it, um, but that is the easiest way. Just put your one-way diode here. Make sure that it's flowing that way but can't back feed this way, and then put the trigger wire for this solenoid on, so towards the front of that diode. So if the key turns, it's getting energized, and then it goes down to the starter. And that way, if your starter gets stuck, it won't back feed and keep your truck running, and then burn up the solenoid. Um, so that hopefully will help people and save them some time right there. So this is pretty sig that's pretty easy. That's what gets you the signal here 
and then you've got your ground wire over here in a similar fashion now we've got this wired it's feeding a whole bunch of stuff i'll put this in the links below so you guys can get this one this thing works like a champ and it's also heavy duty so it's got some high amperage that it can handle but it is continuous duty so whereas we burn through a couple of these this guy on the run side this guy can be intermittent duty so this one's okay to use here this guy though he's on all the time and he needs to be a continuous duty much the same fashion um, we've got our red wire over here you can see we've got the poles over there we're feeding it this is also that is a wire from a grid heater it happens to be the perfect length to get us where we need to go so that's our juice coming into it these are our things that need to be powered and then to trigger it we've just got a ground on one side and then this one we actually trigger off of a keyed so in it ha you have to make sure that the, it's not an interrupted key that will also help save people some time because if you find something that when you turn the key to start in that cycle between start and run if it blips out you will lose your connection there so it needs to be something we have it run currently down here i don't know if we'll be able to see it but we have it currently run off the fuel heater fuel heater i believe you can see the red wire going down here uh, well you can kind of see the plug right down there um anyway but we have that we have it takes a we yeah we just we've got a long little plug system set up in there with a skinny it's one of those long skinny blade connectors that goes down into that one and gives us our signal it was a nice clean way to do it i know that looks like a lot but it's feeding pyrometers and trans temps and and um the run and a lot of other stuff so it kind of looks like a a rat's nest but i promise you that is probably the easiest way We've tried a whole bunch of different spots to, to locate the relays, but this just seems to be the easiest way to get that done. Obviously, modify it however the heck you want, but that will probably save you 10 or so hours if you just take a look at this. Hopefully, that was helpful, guys. Best of luck on your builds, and we will talk to you later.